A few years ago, I stood here with a red marker to show the, the curse, a great curse, the curse of a nuclear Iran. But today, today I bring this marker to show a great blessing, the blessing of a new Middle East between Israel, Saudi Arabia, and our other neighbors. We will not only bring down barriers between Israel and our neighbors, will build a new corridor of peace and prosperity that connects Asia through the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel to Europe. This is an extraordinary change, a monumental change, another pivot of history. But I also believe that we must not give the Palestinians a veto over new peace treaties with Arab states. Sanctions must be snapped back. And above all, above all, Iran must face a credible nuclear threat. Saudi Arabia and the European Union have kicked off a new initiative promoting a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The Egyptian, Jordanian and Arab League endorsed initiative comes on the sidelines of the 78th UN General Assembly in New York. More from ILTV's Steve Leibovitz. The so-called Peace Day effort on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly called together a package of incentives for Israelis and Palestinians in hopes of jump-starting the peace process, which has been frozen for the last decade. Jordan, Egypt, and the Arab League are also part of the initiative, the opening meeting of which was held at the start of the 78th meeting of the UN General Assembly. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan al Saud told the gathering that there would be no solution to the Palestinian Israeli conflict without a Palestinian state. We are unified as Arab, Arab group for those who think that there is a single Arab, single diplomat that is not sitting at this moment, at, at this time. Look at our unity, look at our strength, and look what we will be doing in the days to come. All of us are united to stop this carnage against the Palestinian people now to allow for humanitarian assistance and passage to the people who need it, food, medicine, all the elements that is needed for staying alive. We need to save human lives and we need to save it immediately. And the third thing that we need to do, we should not allow as humans and as, as defenders of international humanitarian law and as UN and as Security Council to allow after 75 years of our first Nakba, another Nakba to be fallen on our people by depopulating the Gaza Strip of its 2.3 million and to throw them outside to Egypt and to make it an Egyptian you know, problem. That should be rejected. Every and each one of us and each one of you and those who are listening to us inside to do everything possible not to allow this crime to happen. And let me at the end to say thank you to Egypt for opening Al Arish airport to allow for humanitarian assistance which they started to receive in order to reach the people in Gaza. And thank you to our brother in Jordan because the, His Majesty the King with is that we need to accomplish immediately. One ceasefire. We are unified as Arab Arab group for those who think all right, Shalom. This is Harawan One, Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp, right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Haraka Kodash, Ma'amav. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. All right, so um, as we all know, this war has been going on over there um, in what they call the Middle East. Um, Focusing on um, the Israelis, which are the Khazars, and the Palestinians, which are Ishmaelites. All right, the Khazars meaning Edomites, um, and they're stuck in a, in an um, entanglement right now. All right, and you have um, uh, I think it was about ten days ago or a month ago. 
you know, not too many, but maybe about a few weeks ago, they had these uh, meetings uh, calling for uh, peace in those areas, dealing with um, the land of Israel, you know, the Israelis, and uh, trying to make peace with his neighbors, uh, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, right? All these countries around that surround um, Israel. Okay, so they were trying to make peace. You had Netanyahu, he had a whole peace plan, which that plan was to drive a line all the way from, uh, I think it was Jordan, or in, um, is that Jordan? And then going through Israel and through the Gaza Strip all the way to Europe. That's their, That was their goal. All right, but now that that goal has been um, fumbled or foiled uh, due to the chaos that's going over there right now, which we all know this chaos that's happening was all planned, right? Okay, we know it was all planned. Uh, for that understanding, it's, it's all over the internet. We already knew this, though, going into what you would call the Albert Pike uh, plan. Going all all the way back to 1871, I think it was, where Albert Pike, which was uh, one of the, uh, a high level um, Satanist or Mason, Mason, 33rd degree devil, 33rd degree Mason devil worshiper, he um, he came out with a plan, allegedly. It just so happened that the plan that was that he came up with. He was approached by some higher ups that asked him to come up with a plan for three world wars. And he came up with that plan. All right. And he wrote it out. And um, it just so happened everything in his plan came to pass. Like they actually, you can tell they stuck with that plan. Allegedly. He had a, a plan for three world wars. Um, and now they're on the third world war to where they said they want to bring the opposition of two sides, two opposing religions with Islam and Christianity. And they were going to bring out the, uh, uh nihilists and the agentures of the Illuminati and get them to, uh, cause friction and chaos between the well-known, uh, powder keg waiting to happen with Palestine and Israel ever since 19, I think, 47, when Israel was established um, by, what was his name, Lord Balford, which was an Edomite, uh, um, Rothschilds, all right? And he, he gave it to uh, those Khazars as a gift. He gave the whole, he gave that Palestine to these Edomites. You know, the same way Esau took America, all right, and called it America. Same thing they're doing over there in Palestine. The devil has, um, the devil meaning deceiver, has no new bag of tricks, man. They're one trick pony. Rob, steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. All right, they just juggle that around in different ways. To steal, kill, and destroy, and to rob, which goes into stealing. So, um, and to kill with the sword. <clears throat> so, as you saw, they called for a peace treaty for those na those areas, and now, um, as soon as they call for peace, you know, Israel, Netanyahu, which was the, which was a disguise for the scriptures say that in Habakkuk chapter two, they enlarge their desires as hell, man. All right, and is as death, so they they can never be satisfied. All right. So um, they were calling for a, a peace plan with Saudi Arabia and all these countries, man. And now that's done with. As of yesterday, um, what's today's date? The 18th. So October 17th or the 16th, you had a missile that was dropped 
on a hospital over there on the Gaza Strip with the Palestinians. And they, they came out in Arab countries, the UAEA, United Arab Emirates, all right? They all came together and said it was Israel that did it. And then Israel came out and said, no, nah, it was Hamas foil, uh, failed rocket that fell on that hospital when Hamas is not known to have those type of powerful rockets. Only the major countries like Iran and Israel and above them have those powerful, powerful rockets to, to, to destroy a whole hospital and kill over 500 people, even more than that, allegedly, and babies and women. All right, so now they call for that peace, and then what? A few, few days later, <laughs> one moment later, next thing you know, all hell breaking loose. Hamas attacks Israel for 70 years of oppression, you know, and um, atrocities done to those people. All right, so... Um, some say it was Iran that that uh, initiated the strike. It just so happens that Biden administration allegedly paid seventy five million to Hamas, which is the political government of the Palestinians, um, the day before the attack. Seventy five million was sent to them. How many? How much money was sent to us over here? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> PPP loan, then they want that back. It's crazy, man. So, uh, so now all these countries that Israel wanted peace with, and uh, and America wanted trying to create uh, a calm before these Muslim nations come together, which they've done that now. It's, it's happened. All these Muslim nations. Which, mind you, they have something up their sleeve called Operation Sandman, where all these UAE or OPEC nations have agreed to pull out of the petrodollar all at the same time. That's up in the air. Then you have uh, Iran in response to Israel saying, yeah, man, we want peace in the Middle East, but also we need to threaten Iran with a major nuke. It's like, what? So now you get this response, you know, Hamas attacks. Because they, they couldn't allow, Hamas could not, or Iran could not allow Israel to try to make that peace that they're looking for in, uh, with their neighbors. Why? Because then Israel will take over all of Palestine. They, they, they can't, they're saying that they cannot be allowed to destroy all of Gaza. Because they allow, if these other nations like Russia, China, um, and these major countries like Iran and the UAEA countries, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Jordan, et cetera, et cetera, if they allow Israel to destroy Gaza, then Israel will move further to take over that whole area. So they're not going to let this happen because they can't. All right, so this, this, this is it, man. Some say it's Ezekiel 38. I don't think so. I think it's moving towards Ezekiel 38 to where Russia is guarding them physically going to happen it's going to manifest you know that's when you're going to see the big guns come out and then um defenses and then you have uh israel i mean iran they said respect expect a response in hours and they threatened israel with an earthquake Whew. now we know we know russia that have an earthquake weapon that can cause earthquakes so all these countries are united together against Israel at this moment. Algeria, Bahrain, Comoros, Djibouti, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Mauritania, Morocco, one of my favorite places, man, uh, right? Oman, Palestine, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, which is a major problem right, with the oil, one of the major OPEC nations, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Tunisia. And all of these are Muslim uh, countries. 
And what's going to happen is there were talks years ago, about 10 years ago, of all the Muslims coming together someday, which we're not Muslim, we're Hebrew Israelites. We're the true Jews. Those people in our land are the fake ones, all right? But uh, there's talks of um, all the people that's under Islam to, to join together around the world, and they're going to create something called the Black Army. Was going to be what to the uh, tied to the black flag that Iran just rose up last night. They put the black flag up. Some people say it's a sign of vengeance. No, it's a sign of mourning. And then the red flag represents vengeance when they put that up. And they put one up a long time ago for the guy Soleimani that Trump administration dest um, destroyed. So it goes into. Um, that's right, man. So uh, my bad, I was looking around um, my surroundings. So all these nations coming together against not only Israel, but the one that's back in Israel, America. They said America needs to claim responsibility for some of this. D Washington, D.C. For, for, um, for sending uh, weaponry over to Israel. Israel talking about switching to a laser beam technology to where they can do um, have a laser they, what they call the Iron Dome they want to call it the Laser Dome now because the Iron Dome is running out of shells to shoot at these missiles so that's why America went over there to resupply them but that can't go on forever so they move into um, something less um, expensive which would be a laser all right. So yeah, man, all these nations coming together. As soon as they said peace, then what happened? This is First Thessalonians five and one. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Jake, Jake, uh, Jake, want everybody to hear they been. Uh, but of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh cometh as a thief and the night. So this is going to come unexpected to everybody. Why? Because they walk around talking about dumb stuff, man. Just like this guy next to me was doing. Dumb shit, man. Confusion, distractions, emotional shit, petty stuff. And they all distracted. You know, wickedness. And it's coming unexpectedly. See, the Lord got everything kindled right now. And, it's, and the fire is kindled. It's going to turn into a full blaze soon. Ultimately into an inferno. So we know perfectly through through the power and the spirit of truth from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We know perfectly, perfect prophecy, perfect understanding. That the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So we we shouldn't be shocked seeing these people sleep here in America, man, around the world. And the day of the Lord is going to bring destruction mainly upon this place, Babylon, America. So this is going to be the place of the most confusion, the line of confusion, right, America. All right. So verse three it says, "For when they shall say peace and safety, who's saying peace and safety?" Those uh, uh, Edomites over there in our land, Netanyahu and all them. They call for safety and peace in the Middle East. And now it's all hell breaking loose. Armageddon. They're gathering the troops. All the troops are gathering over there for war. So th when they shall say, when they finally said it, this, the prophecies are speaking now. Habakkuk chapter 2. And they're saying it out loud, calling for peace. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, man. So it came, ultimately it's talking about America, but um, it's unexpected. All of this is unexpected. It happened out of nowhere. How did it, how, matter of fact, let me get this. I 
after hundreds of Israelis. <laughs> you got yelled that out? Yeah, they mad. You hear that? You better run. Send it for the cars. I'm about to blow some shit up. Were slaughtered by Hamas near Gaza. Condemnation and condolences poured in from around the world, but not from Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Now, in his first comments, instead of empathy, Putin blasting the U.S. This is a clear example of the failure of the United States policy in the Middle East, which tried to monopolize any settlement between Israelis and Palestinians. Troll TV following suit, mocking both America and Israel for allegedly being caught off guard by Hamas's attack. Mossad and its famous counterintelligence, as well as the U.S. and its CIA, slept through Hamas's invasion. It's the biggest Israeli failure in security since 1973. See that? So this is catching them off guard, man. They were asleep. They said they were asleep. Because <laughs> and when the Lord said that, man, that noble shall dwell in the dust. All right, so it's catching them all off guard, man. All right, so it's when they, First Thessalonians 5 and 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape when that destruction comes, man. Not only here in America, but in the land of Israel, too. All right, so it's happening out of, unexpectedly as a thief in the night. See that? So that's how the Lord moving on these people, man. Moving nations against nations. Matter of fact, this is Job, Job 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, that thou, uh, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass, man. So the Lord has a set day where Esau is going to fall as a nation. And that beginning of it is happening right before our eyes. The Lord said he's going to turn back our captivity before our eyes, man. So this place is falling. Their power is falling in the world. Their allies are failing, right? And being confounded around the world. All right? So he appointed, seeing his days are determined. So they got an end that's coming. See, Netanyahu, he think he's going to continue in that office or... um you know, to continue to branch out their rulership over Palestine and oppression where they, they don't want a two-state uh, area. They don't want Israel and Palestine. They want, they want it to be just the Israelis area. All right. But the Lord never going to give them peace in that area, man. Never. That's our land. All right. I should rather say Yahawashai's land. And that belongs to the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. So they'll never have peace in that place. All right. So, um, but this is the inward thought. You judge a tree by its fruits. And you can tell by their plans. He said, I got a plan. Last time it was a curse, but this is a plan. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Nathan Yahoo's a weirdo. Psalms 49 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names, man. All right, over in the land of Israel, you got Rothschild Boulevard. You see that? Paying homage to the Rothschilds. So they, they call the names after themselves. <laughs> right? America, America Vespucci. Okay, so their inward thought is that they're going to continue forever doing this wickedness they've been doing upon the earth, right? Sending their armies all over the world, devouring nations, devouring the Palestinians. Now they want to increase it and broaden their horizon. The scriptures say that what? They cannot be satisfied and they are as deaf, like the grave cannot be satisfied. They got to consume and kill some shit. All right, so one of the, one of America's strongholds is Israel, and the stronghold for Israel is America. All right, all the allies is all failing now. Okay, even their weapons are being um, countered. 
All right. So it says here, Nahum 3 and 11. Thou also shalt be drunken. So America's going to be drunken, man. And, and um, well, the Edomites, you might as well say. Thou shalt be hid. Thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. All thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they shall be, if, if they be shaken, they even, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. What's their strongholds? Their military bases, man. And they just showed that today, uh, Hamas taking over an American military base over there in Palestine, I think Palestine or Lebanon, somewhere over there. But they showed them taking over the bases and their uh, embassies. So all of those, if they be shaken, if they be attacked, they shall all fall into the mouth of the eater. The Lord going to make sure they get caught. All right, Jeremiah 15, uh, 50 and 16. Cut off the sower from Babylon. All right, all the jobs, all the investments, right? The debt, the long-term investors. Cut off the sower from Babylon, the, the, um, the bankers. And him that handles the sickle, all right, all the businesses and him that handle handle up the sickle in the time of harvest, man. And the time of harvest represents the springtime and also October. That's what time we in, the fall. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people. So all these nations are starting to flee to their own lands. They call for an evacuation of all Israelis from uh lebanon and jordan because they they uh what they're going to fall into the mouth of the eater <laughs> and, the, and the eater in this sense is going to be russia palestine all those arabs all right they're going to create something called allegedly the black army which is black flag army all right now it says here uh they shall turn everyone to his own to his people, and they shall flee everyone to his own land. What's that? Evacuations when they about to go to war. All right, and they not even letting the America. They said they're not letting the. Um, it was a woman came on TikTok. I don't know if it's true or not, but she allegedly said they're not letting her leave. She got to pay extra money to leave, and they're evacuating like fifty people a day for America. All the other countries, they already got their people out of there. <laughs> so it just says a lot. So this place is being cut off, and all their help is being cut off. All Israel's help is being cut off. And everywhere they have bases at in their hidden hand is going to fall into the mouth of any nation that want to come up against them. All right? And everybody's fleeing to their own lands right now, to their own countries, um, to avoid uh, th these uh, wars. All right, evacuating embassies, that's what they call it. All right, so they call it for peace like they're running things, man. No, it's the most high that controls things upon the earth, you know? This is Isaiah 48, and this is what the Lord said about them. Isaiah 48 and 22, there is no peace, saith Yahweh, unto the wicked. They want peace, man, so they can do more wickedness upon the earth. No, nah, that time is done. There, there shall be no peace, man. They shall not feel quietness in their belly, you know, with their plans and stuff like that, man. All right? So when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them every damn time, according to the, the scriptures and the spirit of Yahweh Shimei Abishai. All 